Dr. Jason Saunders here with H5 USA and another research review. Today we're going to talk about a concept called the hyperoxic hypoxic paradox. This was a paper published back in June of 2020. Uh, so we'll obviously we'll post the link below uh, just so you can get access to the paper as well. But the idea here is this. We know that there's actually quite a bit of benefit to hyperoxia. In other words, if we can increase the oxygen inside your body, we know for sure that there are some great benefits to that. Likewise, our body is very, very attuned to low oxygen environments. And if our body senses a low oxygen environment, hypoxia, we have very specific adaptations that our body goes through to protect us. And we also know that our body, or there's ways to hack that, in other words, creating these hyperoxic environments, we could improve certain biologic and physiologic functions. And by creating these hypoxic environments, we can do the same in different ways. The question became, what are the benefits specifically of hypoxia? What are those benefits of hyperoxia? And if you do both, are there even further benefits? In other words, is there a cumulative effect of our synergy between those two that makes an even larger impact in our, in our biology and physiology? And the answer, of course, is yes. And so the real take home here is uh, we know that in a hypoxic environment that we will get an increase in a thing called VEGF. Uh, we'll get an increase in these things called stem cells. So what the body's doing is in response to hypoxia, it's trying to regenerate old blood vessels or heal damaged blood vessels or grow new blood vessels and upregulate these stem cells to start improving how many cells we have functioning so that we can get normal or, or healthy biologic function even in the, in, in the face of hypoxia. Think of adaptations to altitude. We also know that we can look at oxygen as a nutrient. And so this hyperoxia, increased oxygen level, provides our body with an, an increased amount of fuel that it needs to perform all of its daily functions. So hyperoxia, like a nutrient, can increase performance of a lot of our cell functions because we're getting more fuel and more fuel equals more function. Where this paper takes a spin is that they found with chronic hypoxia, you get a decrease in a thing called sirtuins and a decrease in mitochondrial biogenesis. What does that mean? Sirtuins are these chemicals, let's say, that in our body help our body deal with inflammation, help our body deal with aging, helps our body deal with stress. There are protective chemicals that allow our body to function well, even in the face of certain stressors that our, our biology or, or physiology faces on a daily basis. And so a decrease in sirtuins means a decrease in that protection. Our mitochondria are the parts of our cells that are in charge of making cellular energy. And so really they're taking the fuel that we're eating and the oxygen that we're breathing, and they're, they're using those two ingredients to make energy so that our cells can perform and function the way we want them to. And with that chronic hypoxia, we get a decrease in mitochondrial biogenesis, meaning a decrease in, in mitochondria. Now what they found was if you play with intermittent hyperoxia hypoxia, you get the benefits of both without the consequences of either. And so therefore we get all the improvements in stem cell activation, we get all the improvements in VEGF and, and new blood set vessel formation, we get the increases in um, immune system activation. We get all of this, but we also get an increase in sirtuins and an increase in mitochondrial biogenesis. So we get an increase in those chemicals that protect our DNA and that help our cells function. And we get an increase in the total amount of mitochondria, meaning now our body's actually able to produce even more energy for more performance and to actually improve recovery, improve healing, uh, even faster. And so uh, that intermittent hypoxia, hyperoxia paradox tells us that the synergy of those two can absolutely be obtained. And we do that strictly through hyperbaric oxygen. And by increasing and decreasing the frequency of visit, by increasing and decreasing the percentage of oxygen, by increasing and decreasing the amount of pressure you're using, you can create relative hyperoxia and relative hypoxia 
which allows you to get those benefits ultimately of gold. So I hope that helps. If you want more detail, definitely click on the paper below so you can understand the, the full detail of the concepts. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.